Hi, this is Hilal. In this video, we will solve a problem on utility maximization. The question is, maximize utility. Uh, it is utility function is being given as u is equal to q1 times q2. q1 and q2 are the two goods. Uh, when price of good 1 is equal to $1, that means price of q1 is $1 and price of q2 is $4. And total budget for the consumer is $120. We need to find out the optimal commodities that this consumer will choose. Also, we need to find out the uh, effect of a one unit increase in the budget on utility. That means how, what happens to the utility of a consumer when there is one unit increase in the, you know, budget of the consumer. Okay. So the question is simply what we need to do. We just need to maximize this utility function. That is, uh, we want to maximize a u is equal to q1 times q2 okay so we want to uh, you know maximize our utility function subject to the budget constraint and what will be our budget constraint in this case we are being told price of good one is uh, one dollar price of good two is four dollar okay and income of the consumer is being denoted by b which is b is equal to 120 dollar okay given these uh, values our budget constraint is simply P1 times Q1 plus P2 times Q2 should be equal to our budget. That means price of good 1 times our units of good 1 plus price of good 2 times units of good 2 should be equal to our budget. That means all the, all the budget should be exhausted. That's why we have the equality sign here. Okay. So let's plug the values here. P1 is 1. So I can write in place of P1, I can simply write 1. So 1 into Q1 is Q1. So this is Q1 plus in place of P2, we have 4. So 4 Q2 is equal to budget is being given as 120. Okay. So we are left with this is our budget. Sorry, this is our utility function and this is our, uh, you know, budget function or our constraint. We want to maximize this utility function with the with this budget constraint okay so we will use you know languages method here uh, to optimize okay so first we need to uh, form a languages function and how do we uh, form out the languages function it's very pretty easy what will i do simply first i will set this constraint equal to zero this budget constraint equal to zero that is i will write 120 minus q1 minus 4 q2 is equal to 0 okay so i just set this whole constraint equal to 0 and i get this very kind of uh, you know function second step is simply multiply this resulting constraint by lambda okay i just multiply it by lambda then our languages function is simply l let's denote it by l will be equal to our objective function plus this resulting constraint okay so our uh, objective function is q1 times q2 plus this resulting constraint which is uh, lambda times we have 120 minus q1 minus 4 q2 okay this will be our languages function now to get the optimal values of q1 q2 and the value of lambda what we need to do we just need to differentiate partially this languages function with respect to q1 q2 and lambda okay and set them equal to zero simultaneously so let's take the partial derivative with respect to q1 first so if i take the partial derivative of this with respect to q1 so let's denote it by uh, L1 that means taking partial derivative of this function with respect to Q1 so derivative of Q1 is 1 so we are left with Q2 here uh, here we have only Q1 in the middle term the derivative of Q1 will be 1 we are left with here minus 1 times lambda that is minus lambda okay so we got here uh, q2 minus lambda and we set it equal to 0 okay uh, symmetrically take partial derivative of this languages function with respect to q1 
this time. So if I take with respect to Q2, derivative of Q2 will be 1. So we are left with uh, Q1. Here the derivative of Q2 will be uh, 1. So we are left with minus 4 lambda. Okay, so minus 4 lambda. And we set it also equal to 0. Okay, so simple thing since I am taking the partial derivative with respect to Q1. Uh, here Q1 is its derivative is 1 since no Q1 uh, Q2 is involved here here is the derivative of uh, you know constant will be obviously 0 because we are taking the partial derivatives with respect to Q2 okay lastly let's take that uh, derivative with respect to lambda the partial derivative of this Langerhans function with respect to lambda since no lambda is involved in the first term its derivative will be 0 so here uh, the derivative of lambda will be 1 so we are left with 120 minus q1 minus 4q2 is equal to 0 okay i hope i am making myself clear next thing is uh, what will we do here okay let me write it here so let us say this is equation first or i will do one thing here also for that let me rub this out okay to save the space so this equation implies Q2 is equal to lambda and this equation implies Q1 is equal to minus 4 sorry plus 4 lambda if I transpose it to RHS okay so let's say this is equation first this is equation second okay I have simply transposed these lambdas to RHS here okay so what will we do we will divide equation first sorry equation first by equation second here that means uh, q2 upon q1 will be equal to lambda divided by 4 lambda okay here uh, let's cancel this lambda and lambda we are left with q2 upon q1 is equal to 1 upon 4 solving further uh, so 4q2 4q2 is equal to q1 okay so this is the value of uh, q1 here okay q1 is equal to 4q2 after that what will we do we just plug q1 is equal to 4q2 in this third let us say this is equation third okay just plug q1 is equal to 4q2 in this equation so plugging this value in this equation we have 120 minus so in place of q1 we have 4q2 let me write it here 4q2 then we have minus 4q2 again 4 q2 is equal to 0 okay so we have 120 now minus 4 q2 minus 4 q2 is equal to 8 q2 so let me write it here so we have uh, minus 8 q2 is equal to 0 or 8 q2 is equal to 120 or q2 will be equal to 120 upon 8 so this is 8 ones are 8 root now the curve bar 8 5 are 40 so the optimal value of good 2 will be equal to 15 okay so q2 is equal to 15 and we know that q1 is equal to 4 q2 just plug this value q2 is equal to uh, 15 in this equation to get the value of q1 that means q1 will be equal to 4 into 15 which comes out to be 60 that means q2 will be equal to 15 sorry 60 here uh, this is 60 so the optimal uh, uh, you know bundle that our consumer will buy will be he will buy uh, you know 60 units of good q1 and six uh, you know uh, 15 units of good q2 having said that we got the optimal bundle we need to find out the effect of one unit increase in the budget of the consumer what happens to the utility of the consumer when uh, the budget increases by one unit okay for that we need to find out the value of lambda okay we are left with so we know lambda is equal to here we can easily find out the value of lambda and here also we can find out the value of lambda let's plug uh, q2 uh, yeah. uh, so, so rather since we got q2 is equal to 15 we can safely say the value of lambda will be also equal to 
15 that means if I plug the value of q2 is equal to 15 if I solve this equation or this equation you will get same result here that means from equation from first just plug q2 is equal to 15 that means our lambda will be equal to 15 okay so this is our lambda is equal to 15 and how do we interpret it simple thing it tells us a simple uh, thing there okay let me take some rest here so we were being told what will happen to our rather uh, estimate the effect of one unit increase in budget how our utility will change when there is one unit increase in the budget that is being you know uh, reflected by the value of lambda that means simple stuff here it tells us the value of lambda what we call also the share price it simply tells us what happens to our utility when there is one unit increase in the constraint of sorry constant of the constraint function okay our function was and this is our budget constraint this is our utility function this lambda tells us how our utility changes when there is one when there is one unit change in the constant of the constraint or simple stuff in this question what happens to our utility when there is one unit increase in the you know budget how our utility changes okay so uh, since we got lambda is equal to 15 lambda is equal to 15 this lambda is equal to 15 tells us a uh, simple thing when when budget increases by one unit our utility utility will increase by 15 units okay this is the interpretation of this lambda in this question so it simply tells us when this budget constraint changes by one unit let us say it become a 121 okay then our utility will also change by 15 units okay so if budget increases by one unit our utility will increase by 15 units or let me write it simple uh, simply if change in budget is one that means change in utility will be equal to 15 okay when budget increases by one unit our budget our utility from the consumption of two goods will increase by 15 units okay i hope i make myself clear in this video thank you